Waikato farmer and FAR board member Alan Henderson knows yellow bristle grass is a real and growing problem for the pastoral industry. Alan is working with ag research scientists and a committee has been formed to develop a number of approaches to manage the weed. I've been here most of my life and uh, probably about 20 years ago we noticed the grass species or a weed coming through in some of the paddocks. Primarily it probably started on our uh, commercial calf rearing unit and we found that uh, later in the later part of summer uh, nothing would eat this grass even though we tried to push the animals to eat it. So from then on it's got worse and worse over the area and probably in the last 10 years it's really started to creep into what we call our dairy platform and uh, along those same lines is when the research started to see what we could do about it and see if we could control it or, or what damage it was actually doing. We looked at our production and, and our production wasn't going where we wanted it to go so we realised it was primarily lack of feed. So we started bringing in more maize silage and perhaps feeding more palm kettle, but um, you know, with further work we realised that our pastures weren't yielding what they should yield. Um, and then it uh, came to a realisation that our yellow bristle grass was um, having a considerable effect um, on our production. So, and we've estimated that the yellow bristle grass is, is probably taking away 20% of our grass production per year. About three years ago we looked at our enterprise and realising that summer is the time when these pastures open up with yellow bristle grass coming in so we've started a more intense summer cropping program so we can uh, one get more yield per hectare and try and cater for this yellow bristle grass to see if we can get on top of it. Ideally it would be nice to have a one stop chemical that you spray it totally eradicates it and you, know, you can get better pastures but yellow bristle grass uh, won't be like that because there's a, there's a huge seed bank building up of, uh, of different seeds and different weeds so um, you know, we might spray this year and have a, a good kill but as soon as you either have open soil or you turn that soil uh, the potential of yellow bristle grass germinating is, um, is huge so you know, we're going to have to have many different tools um, to try and uh, manage the, uh, the yellow bristle grass that we have. We've gone through a cropping program, primarily starting with maize or chicory, and using the chemicals to control the weeds in those crops, we can control the seed bank of yellow bristle grass, and following those crops, we uh, put it back into permanent pasture, and we seem to uh, get at least three years out of the pasture without any uh, severe dominance of yellow bristle grass coming through. As long as we get a good thick sward of, uh, of new pasture, uh, keep all the spaces out of the pasture, yellow bristle grass uh, has more difficulty in establishing. One way of uh, capturing the seed uh, and trying to lower the seed bank is putting that into either grass silage or, or May silage. Um, grass silage, as soon as it goes into the, the wrapped uh, fermentation, it actually kills the seed. Uh, making hay of it doesn't kill the seed. And also the seed can go through the animal, through the effluent, and if you spread the effluent back onto pasture, effectively you're spreading new seed over your pasture. Here's a good patch. You, it's dropped its seed already. Are you, are you having much problem? Are you observing much problem with, with, with the seed? That, that, that's... We've been aware of yellow bristle grass for just over 10 years now, and in that time we've noticed it spread extremely rapidly through New Zealand. The problem is that cows don't like to eat it quite frequently, and it reduces pasture production because it reduces the quality of the pasture. And also in winter when it dies out, it is replaced with weedy, other weedy species. Overseas, where yellow bristle grass has been fed out in higher quantities, it has been recorded by vets to cause ulceration to the mouth regions of stock. It's found throughout the world now, very difficult to trace where it's from, but we believe it comes from China or that region of Asia. The spray which is now approved for yellow bristle grass um, in pasture is phenoxaprop sold as Pumares, and this is very effective. It takes a grass out of other grass species, which is a very difficult task. It kills yellow bristle grass right up until the seed head stage, 
And that's a difficulty because many people don't recognise that they've got yellow bristle grass until they actually see the seed heads. But we recommend that for best control, it needs to be taken out well before the seed head stage, which is probably about mid-December. But if it's a cooler year, then it can be right up till mid-January. It's still OK. The easiest characteristic to see yellow bristle grass in the pastures is this red colour at the base of the plant. The green is also a slightly lighter green, and once you get your eye in, you can see yellow bristle grass plants quite readily. At this stage of growth, yellow bristle grass is extremely palatable to stock, and they actually will graze it preferentially instead of rye grass. That can lead to a problem when it comes to spraying as well, because they will actually nip this off real close to the ground, and when it comes to spray, there won't be any leaf there, which is why when spraying, it's got a label recommendation that the paddock not be treated within seven days of it being grazed. This is to allow sufficient regrowth or leaf to appear so that the herbicide will kill the plant. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.